welcome to Morona Tutorials. In this session, we're going to be looking at light mapping in Unity. In this session, we'll be looking at setting up emissive materials, general space setup, lighting settings, and then light mapping. We'll also look at some other tools to help optimize the space. Let's jump in. Light mapping is extremely important if you want a space to run well on as many systems as possible with really good lighting results. By using real-time lighting, you create a lot of overhead and we're basically limited to one to four lights in real time. But with light mapping, we can create really high quality results in a texture that is part of the file size for sure, but much more performant overall. The only catch with assets that you want to bake into a light map uh, need to be static or non-moving in the space. Uh, so unless you're using a sphere that's going up and down and the shadow underneath that is reasonable for that sort of event, generally speaking, all light mapped assets will not be moving. Uh, but the lighting will look amazing at very little performance cost. So this session, we're going to be looking at how to set up light mapping. I've created uh, a basic space here, which is basically just a bar, a uh, door, and a sort of a stage. I've set up some basic emissive lights on the edge uh, there and sort of on the, the tips and down there. I will be looking at creating those materials as needed so you can use them as you need to, but also using uh, normal lights. So for example, in this case, we have one directional light. Now, because assets are one-sided, so up here it's, uh, it's and down there it's see-through, we can create uh, this light, which will create a little bit of light. So that's 90. So we've got that. So the avatar will have uh, a shadow and let's go with a slight shadow with 0.1. And all of the other lighting is done with the point lights or spotlights or other forms of lights, which you have here. So we've got direction light, point light, spotlight. Um, area light has to be baked. So that has a certain uh, sort of quality to it. Now light mapping or baking as it were is a big part of reflection probes and light probes. So if you wanna do light reflection probes, light maps will be made if you bake a light into that. Now there's a bit of complications in regards to if you want everything in there or not. So you can control it, but um, generally speaking, you'll probably want both. And the light probes allow uh, dynamic objects to have sort of some of the light mapping information or the light information around it. I will be creating tutorials on those separately. So we're going to start with light mapping. So the first thing we need to do is look at emissive uh, materials. So it could be a texture. Uh, but in this case, these cases, we're just looking at emission. So usually when you start, it'll have be off. So you can see this here. So you want to turn emission on. Uh, if you're doing uh, one color, we have the color here. Uh, but the light element comes from the intensity. So usually I'll aim around about two. Because uh, in Mona, the bloom effect is based on that intensity. So if you make it too high, the bloom uh, tools will react a lot to that information. So around two, one to two is a good amount for your average situations. Um, you can, if you wanted to make a material, I don't think I have any very good examples of that. You could certainly create a, a color and then put the emissive level higher on that. So black is no light and white or color is light. So you could use those and then put the intensity on that as well. So that's how you create emissive textures or emissive materials. Now, once you've got your space, now of course my space is white, so we could see the results of the bake, but I would have like proper wood and other textures around the environment, but I wanted to focus on the results of light mapping. Um, I have kept the normal maps on there, however. So if you look very subtly, you can sort of see uh, that. There are a couple of things you need to do to create a light mapping. So when it comes to your lights, the point light itself needs to be on uh, baked or mixed. Now, usually I'll keep them separate, uh, but mixed means real time and baked, but usually most of my lights will be baked. Now, these lights have been created as prefabs. So if I actually update one of them, so baked, and then just go, uh, not that one, to the top and then just go 
apply all, that means that all of the point lights will be set to baked. Now, as it stands, I don't know the light on these. Uh, when you have a lot of lights, a lot of them turn off. It is possible if you use the render mode here, you can set to important and that will apply the light, but generally the baked light and the real-time light effects are quite different. So I'll usually just keep them off. The directional light is real-time, so I want the avatar to cast shadows and that's how we do that. So the main thing to note here is that all of the lighting that you want to be light mapped with the higher quality need to be on baked or uh, emissive in the way we set it up before. The next thing is our assets need to be set to static. Now, usually I will make sure that all of the assets will just be static like so with the S change children. However, the ones that actually matter are contribute GI. And if you're doing reflection probes, reflection probe static as well. The rest are helpful for optimization. Then we can go to the lighting. If we go to window, rendering, lighting, and we can put this here. No, I usually put it there. We have this. Now we can just go new. Now we've got scene, environment, real time, and baked. The one we want now is scene. So we're going to go new lighting settings. Uh, I'm going to, I'll keep that there, but I'm going to name it stage lighting. So that's there. And then we're going to focus on all of these settings. Now these are too high for testing, but these are pretty good for final baking. So what I will usually do, uh, some people use baked indirect. I use shadow mask. It depends on which one you want to go with. There's some elements there. Under that, we have the light mapper. So you can use the progressive CPU or progressive GPU, depending on the graphics card you have. I will bounce between the two, depending on the results. They're slightly different. So it depends on which one you want to focus on. I'll use those two on usually, and I will, to start, uh, reduce these to about a quarter of what these settings are. So that'll be eight. Uh, this one will be 128. This one will be 64. Uh, leave it, leave it, leave it. Filtering, leave that. Uh, light map resolution, I'll take down to 20. Uh, light map padding, I will save. Max light map size will be 2048. Uh, ambient occlusion will be on, then leave those. Non-directional directional, up to you. I'm going to leave it to directional. And I'll leave this at medium for now. And when we want to bake the final result, I'll put all of those back up. So all of the objects that we want light mapped in our space scene will have been set to static. Note that very small objects should not be set to static because the light mapping texture will be too small. Artifacts are also not static because uh, artifacts can be moved in the future. So if you have an artifact or a canvas that is casting a shadow and then they are taken out in the future, the shadow will stay there. So we kind of don't want that. Uh, portals, on the other hand, those are embedded in the space. So those can have uh, be static if you want. So once again, we've got our settings. And basically all we do is press generate lighting. Note I'm going to time-lapse all of the renders because they'll take a while. So we have our lighting, it's very bright. Um, and notice how this one, the light maps are all wrong. And on here it's all right. Now I did that on purpose to show you how important it is to select your original model and then go to the inspector and go to the model tab at the front and make sure that generate lighting UVs is selected on all assets that you're going to light map. So go apply. The first UV layer is on the texturing that you'll do in your third party asset like Blender or Maya. And the second UVs are the light map uh, UVs, which are very different. It is possible to create the second UV in your third party asset, uh, but if you're building the space in Unity, I find it much easier and faster to do the light mapping in Unity. So just make sure that you apply the generate light map UVs uh, to every object. So when we go back to lighting, it will take a little bit longer to unpack all of your assets. Now, the reason we're unpacking them is because we're creating this asset. These are overlapping, which is not what we want. So the generate UVs 
will make sure that it will unpack all of the UVs into unique environments so there's no overlapping. So when I generate light lighting, it should look much better. So that's much better. And we have our lighting, for example. So in the dark or the corners here, you sort of see that nice ambient occlusion. Um, in the corners, you'll see a bit darker and elements like that with nice shadows there. Now, the end result is this. So all of our assets are now separate. So there's no overlap, which is what we want. And we have a good idea of what our lighting is doing. So the next thing is this space is way too bright. So I'm going to go into my light. And I'm going to reduce that to, say, maybe hmm, 0.7. That's <laughs> a good guess. Um, and once again, make sure that all of them are applied. So apply all. And just to double check, that's to 0.7. Um, now this is interior, but I do kind of want a warm feeling because it's like maybe a presentation or a comedy club. So I'm going to keep it a little bit red. Um, the range is quite high as well. So you could either adjust the intensity or the range or both. We'll see how that one goes. Uh, now, as you can see, the blue is getting uh, nicely placed on the environment. So we're going to keep that as is. And we have our pink uh, there and there, which is good as well. So I think the emissive level is correct. So let's go back to our lighting and bake again. So in this case, the lighting is a bit darker. So this is kind of where we want it to be. And these are a lot brighter because of that. So I think I might actually turn those down. So let's go to our colors here. So that's a two. So let's go back to one. And the pink is also back to one. Mm, 1.2. 1 0.2. And our white, let's hide that. Yeah, that, that seems okay, I think. So we'll keep that. All right. Now, some of these areas are a bit dark. So this comes back to our lighting. So I'm going to punch that up to maybe 1.2. Go to the parent, apply that. And then we have our next. So uh, light mapping is very much uh, a trial and error. And then over time, you start getting very good. It depends on the lighting. It depends on the materials. It depends on all of the things. Light mapping does take time and it does make a much better space once it's done well. Now, notice that the quality here is not great, and that's fine, because we're focusing on speed uh, with the settings that we've got. Uh, once we are happy with what we've got, we can increase the quality to have a much better result. So we can do that. Uh, as an example, I'm going to do a GPU version uh, with all of the same settings and see how that looks and see how fast it is. So let's go. So for a small space like this, it's kind of the same result, <laughs> to be honest. Um, but that lighting is much better. So I actually quite like that. So that's good. So that's a good base. Now, when it comes to canvases, a lot of uh, builders are interested in how the lighting of this is affected because it is not a baked object. So there's two approaches to making uh, artifacts or thing or dynamic objects more light. One approach is, of course, going to the material itself. And you can actually make this a unlit material. Um, so I think most people go to, ah, <laughs> unlit. Um, so set this standard to texture, and then that will have zero lighting information and just 100%. So if you're doing sort of uh, LEDs or a bright asset that you wanna create in the space, you can make that unlit. Now, the other approach is using light probes, and we'll use a different tutorial for that one. So with light probes, you can put little dots all around the space, and then those dots will take in a general lighting information that will be applied to dynamic objects. If I had some light probes around here, this would be brighter as well. So two approaches to that. Down here, you can actually see the size. So this is 2.7 meg at 1024 because it's quite a simple space. A large complex space depends on how big it is and how much space you want to use on these textures. 
uh, to create light mapping, but uh, some people will have anywhere from 5 to 10 uh, 2048 textures, but that takes up a lot of space of the file size. So it is a balance between quality versus file size um, when it comes to light mapping. So, so even though I have 2048 here, uh, because of the light map resolution here, this only needs uh, 1024. So we'll be increasing that uh, very soon. Let's look at increasing all of the information back to sort of the original. Um, so that was like 32. This was 512. Uh, this was 256. Um, and keep that there. I'm going to double this. Now, once again, this is a small space, so I can actually create much a high resolution, much higher resolution. So let's go 50 and see how that goes. Still 2048. I'm going to keep that directional. And this time I'm going to keep this, I'm going to set this to higher resolution. So this will take a lot longer, um, but it the results will be much better, hopefully. So let's give the GPU a shot. So this looks pretty good. So a nice blue sort of setting there. If we go to baked lights, it's still uh, less than one map. So this is 24 by 24 or 2K by 2K. So we could even go bigger if we wanted to. Uh, but comparison, I'd like to do sort of GPU and CPU. So let's grab that. This one I've time-lapsed about 10 times, whereas previously I've done about five times. So this one takes a little bit longer than the other ones. Uh, so when it comes to higher quality results, the progressive CPU will take much longer than the GPU. So keep that in mind as well. Um, but the results are pretty good. Now, small note. If you want to, you can actually, if you select the object, it will tell you where in the space they are. So that's quite useful in regards to finding out uh, how the how the texture looks, uh, depending on the situation. So that's quite a useful tool as well. Now, when it comes to the sort of space that you're using on a light map, you actually want to reduce this as much as possible. So you want to get this on your last one that you make as, as full to make sure that what assets are created are used to the fullest of their ability. So this is a bit of waste. So I, I would possibly look into increasing the amount to uh, 60 or 70. And once again, more complex spaces will have a few more numbers that you can work with. Another thing that I would like to point out is the ability for uh, assets themselves to be increased in size. So if you have an asset that is more important or that you would like to take up more light mapping uh, in the textures, you can do that by changing the scale here. Now this is not on the model that you've imported. This is on the asset that has been set to static. And in the mesh renderer, you have a scale in light map. So if I wanted to basically double the size of this, into in the uh, light map, I could make that to two. It is also possible while we're looking at the mesh renderer, you can like, of course, turn off the contribute global illumination here. So this uh, will not affect the light um, and that will change this here. And once again, by going into lighting and then generate lighting, this will probably be adjusted. So let's have a quick look. Uh, once again, select on the bar, so it's that big there. So if we go to our baked light map, you can notice that it is now twice as big as it was. And this uses a little bit more of the space, uh, which is kind of what we want. So play with those settings. There's a lot of settings to play with in order to get the best result you can. That's about it for light maps. So once again, this is like the, the overview of the light maps. There are, of course, a, a lot of other smaller uh, detailed things you can use to optimize the file size, optimize the result. But hopefully this uh, session has given you a starting point in regards to light maps. Happy building.